The early Chinese immigrants' pioneers were typically sojourners' workers, looking for a piece of gold mountain to take back to China to help their families. Many faced conditions of racism, exclusion, and economic exploitation, even as they helped transform America by building railroads, establishing fisheries, harvesting crops, and producing in factories. Our place today in this society rests, in part, on their legacy. It is in memory of their unrecognized struggles and profound contributions that we offer the Sojourner Award. Mr. Kleisel Yen has recorded a statement in Cantonese for us tonight. His daughter has provided us with a translation for this event as well. Here to welcome our awardee, Kleiser Yen. Please welcome his daughter, Chris Yen, her husband, Hubert Young, and his nephew, Alan Yu. Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Yu, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about my uncle, Kleisler Yen, who is the proud recipient of the Sojourner Award as bestowed upon him by the Chinese Historical Society of New England. Um, so first and foremost, want to send a big congratulations to my Kao Fu, Kleister Yen, and a big thank you to the Chinese Historical Society of New England for recognizing my Kao Fu's uh, achievements and contributions to the Chinese um, community in Boston for, for so many years. So congratulations and thank you. So you heard me refer to my uncle as Kao Fu, which for Cantonese speakers, you'll understand that as uh, meaning maternal uncle. And growing up in Chinatown myself, um, I saw at a very young age, um, the type of Renaissance man that my uncle is, uh, my Kao Fu. He had talent and passion for art history, technology, calligraphy, photography, writing, um, the list goes on. And as a first generation Chinese immigrant, he had the same American dream that many other immigrants had, and that was to establish a, a better life for himself and his family. But what made him different was his ability to dream big. Um, starting with him and my aunt, Bosa Mark, um, establishing the Chinese Wushu Research Institute. And my aunt um, herself, in her own right, is, is a titan and icon in the martial arts community. So, and the school was very successful. So my uncle did that. He also started the Boston branch of the Singto Chinese newspaper. He was the editor. Um, he penned ed editorials in the paper. Um, he practiced calligraphy. He practiced photography. Um, he played multiple Asian and Western musical instruments and played in performance bands, uh, performing all over the city. Um, he started cultural organizations. Um, he, he really did it all and he did it well. Um, and for me at six, seven, eight, nine years old, um, for me, I thought, who, who's cooler than my Kao Fu? Who other, who other than him can do all those things and do it so well and do it so successfully? So, um, he was truly one of a kind and all those things I mentioned, uh, the intrinsic passions, the God-given talents, which allowed him to play his music, um, put inkbrush to paper, put thoughts to print, um, turn ideas into reality, and most importantly, to have the drive and perseverance to succeed, really allowed him to not only provide for his immediate and extended family, but also contribute back to his community in many indelible ways. Um, his accomplishments and influence have helped to shape the Boston Chinese community through all its changes in, in almost five decades that he's been here uh, in Boston. And he's still going strong today. 
um, with the same passion uh, he had when he first arrived in this country and in this community in Boston. So um, without further ado, uh, again, thank you, Chinese Historical Society of New England for bestowing this well-deserved honor to a great man. And congratulations again to my uncle, my Kao Fu, Kleisler Yen. Thank you. Congratulations to my dad, Mr. Kleisler Yen, Yen Wen Long Xin San, on this much deserved Sojourners Award. An award for the importance of community, culture, history, presence, and for humanity. I'm sure many of our family and friends, community members, and just about anybody who has heard of Mr. Yen from Tsingtao newspaper, the Chinese Wushu Research Institute, and the Asian American Association knows of him to be someone who is passionate about bringing people together and connecting them to resources to help build their dreams and their families too. My dad's undeniable commitment to advocate for Chinese immigrants is because he wholeheartedly understands what it's like to come from hardship and the kind of hurdles one must face in order to find a sense of belonging. He was fatherless at the age of 10 years old and he had to face every difficulty and decision making on his own while looking after his younger brother. Failure was not an option for him because the kind of challenges he faced came down to survival. Every knowledge and skill set he also acquired on his own initiative rather than having any formal training or mentorship. And as a young man, he was already a strong believer in creating opportunities and also adopting an attitude of optimism, even in times of adversity. So he is truly the epitome of what it's like to take destiny in one's own hands. There is nobody that I know who is more resilient, resourceful, courageous, persistent, wise, generous, kind, and stubborn. My family and I am very proud of everything that he's achieved. And I am especially honored to be able to call him as my dad. Thank you to the Chinese Historical Society of New England and its supporters for recognizing the sojourners and for creating this special event. Hello, everyone. I'm Hubert Young, Yang Zixing. I'm very happy and very proud to be able to know my wife, Yen Wen Long Xin Sang, to be able to know the Chinese Historical Society of New England. 颁赠俾佢今年度嘅游子奖，我相信大家对殷先生都唔会觉得陌生噶啦。佢喺 Boston 四十几年无私嘅贡献，真系无可厚非，数不胜数。由佢喺七十年代创办嘅中国武术研究所，到佢开办《星岛日报》Boston 分版，到最近领头组织亚美联谊会。不但止幫助到多華人喺美國社會立足同融合，亦都提升咗華人喺美國社會嘅地位，令到華人受到肯定同尊重。阿爸,爸，恭喜曬你收到呢個獎項。我知道你獎項咧對你嚟講係唔重要嘅，不過你咁多年嘅貢獻，呢、這個獎你係應得嘅。恭喜恭喜！刘英兰华人历史协会俾我本年度游子奖，因为疫情关系，年会颁奖破天荒喺网路上举行，并且通过网上视频访问我，问我要讲些乜嘢。首先我好感恩，感恩美国社会俾我嘅自由发展机会
同埋法治嘅环境，感恩朋友俾我嘅关怀，感恩喺各嘅社团共事，佢嘅支持同埋帮助，亦感恩华人历史会俾我嘅荣誉。我同太太一九七五年带着十一岁嘅仔同埋一岁嘅女。移民到美国 Boston， 只要个人是一九七六年创办中国武术研究所，我系负责行政同埋出版，太太咪煲禅，负责教学。一九八零年应聘开办《星岛日报》Boston 分版，一直负责直到今日。业而我喺一九九二年创办咗演艺沙龙，一九九四年共同创办中华书法会，二零一零年系领头创办亚美联谊会，负责亚美艺术团同埋纸编亚美报。二零一九年又联合创办大湾区爱爱乐联盟，喺澳门注册。二零二零年联合创办谷氏地震预报研究所。由于四十六年来，我主要从事系中文嘅新闻业，曾写咗大量嘅文章及新闻，发表喺《星岛日报》，对波士顿地区华人社会啊有够广泛接触，所以我认为我有资格。以见证和感言呢个题目接受访问，更重要嘅系希望通过访问，我试图为华人社区存在一些嘅问题，能够有自己嘅发言，但系未知正确唔正确。第一，随着电脑、网路、电信。智能化嘅发展，好多高科技嘅产品一波一波被生态咗。不信华人社会，有一日真热热当中成长，但系历史唔会更新，唔可以太对，只会留下一个轨迹。华人历史协会应运而生，系记录咗华人社会几十年嘅风云。记录咗喺美国华人参与美国社会嘅创造，同埋同埋不断成长，佢哋有重大嘅贡献。历史见证俾我哋知道，华裔系建设美国社会一份子，英语国嘅族裔平等，平等地受到肯定同埋尊重。第二，四十六年来。我目睹华人社会新移民嘅争，激烈同较为单一集中嘅亲亲饮业走向多元化，人口结构亦以广东人为主，亦慢慢改变。流行嘅中文语言同台山话、广东话到现在嘅普通话混合体。第三。华人社会最大嘅变化，莫过于几个社团，现在我冇点名。四十多年前，呢几个社团几乎一无所有，从卑士文同土库起步，到今日成为物业嘅大业主。当然，呢几个团体以佢哋嘅智慧同埋力量。成只房屋地产高张呢个浪潮，系用社会嘅支持以及政府嘅特别资源，为社区建立咗数以千计嘅成家房屋。当然，佢哋又有其他个服务，功德不少。但几啲社团都系不无力机构，其共同嘅特点都系发展房屋。发展房地产而变成咗大业主，贡献咗呢个社区，亦成就咗佢哋自己。现在
，你这些大学生注意重要嘅工作在数中，佢哋三两嘅人可以拥有几千尺嘅办公室，好成功。第四点，当然华南华人社会低收入嘅廉价房屋系好少。大仔，我知道当时照中华公所名义下边拥有嘅大同村，实质上边系用政府七百二十万嘅贷款兴建。当时申请呢个廉租屋系好容易，等候排期亦都唔时间唔长。现住几个房屋大塔、大坑叶子啊，系一个不毛利机构建咗。属于天际嘅低收入廉价房屋，反而申请入市更难，等候排期更加长。用呢种嘅催算，以后有机会建更多嘅房屋，会不是等候入市排期又会更加长呢？第五，当然新移民增加咯。建造低型嘅房屋，远远赶不上需求。不过可唔可以反思一下 ？A， 如果咁样嘅增建房屋，能够有一千满足所住低收入房屋嘅所需吗？华人社会偏重于建低廉嘅低收入房屋。能够解决社区问题吗？假定如果移民都有好嘅工作，有好嘅收入，美国咁大，系处处可以买屋，处处可以系吴家，系我哋自己屋企人。B， 其实华人社会仲有好多嘅社会细胞，亦好需要地方。例如 office 啊，活动场所，呢啲社会细胞系构成整个社会嘅重要元件。呢种元件咧，健康啦，社会就会健康。好多社团细胞元件，亦系不劳嘅机构。可惜呢啲社团冇任何机会，好似等低收入家庭等廉租屋一样。等到佢哋所需要嘅地方，呢啲拥有数百而数而千计嘅出租单位，有大量活动空间嘅大业主相比，佢哋真系群无落锥之地。我举个例，例如呢个人华人历史协会几十年过去咗啦。只有百几尺左右嘅办公室，半个职员，一个全职都未有。华人大量嘅历史资料冇地存放，又例如一个有八十几年历史嘅音乐戏曲团体，系中国华人啊好重要一个呢个啊精神寄托嘅嘅地方。佢哋一樣嘅無係不無利機構。今日八十幾年過去，只能夠租咗一個土庫，約莫三三百尺，經常二三十人擠喺呢個空間裏邊。又例如阿美聯儲會十一年嚟服務同埋成長整個社區，係有目共睹。阿美聯儲會可以喺波士頓 Common 辦一整日嘅成三萬人參與嘅活動，並獲得咗獲得咗省府市府認同同埋肯定，並且發定每年九月份大二嘅星期六叫做阿美節。幾年前曾經獲得政府都方面答應。喺中华贸易大楼俾一个好细嘅办公室佢哋，不过后来又被封咗，封咗，咗冇咗。听见讲系冇识政治因素
，更有好多个老嘅社团，几十年来基本上边冇变，佢哋生存嘅空间、生活嘅空间非常之狭窄，只能够靠打麻雀、偷水，勉强维持佢嘅租金以及开支。知即系大三点，政府作为资源供应一方，系应该检讨房屋政策啦。几十年来，点解呢啲资源都集中几个大业主社团，而忽略咗更多更多弱势而且不同系不无理嘅资源？资源系严重嘅单向。经邪喺低收入嘅房屋，喺一个多元社会当中系唔平衡、系唔平等嘅。一个不平衡、不平等嘅社会，点样可以和谐呢？第六点，我提出呢、這个战争或减员，以及上边呢个问题，系当作一个。新闻工作者嘅良知，一个观察咗华人社会几十年嘅美国公民嘅见证同埋感言。当然，我嘅意见唔系一定正确，但系我欢迎任何人同我讨论，可以指正。最后，我会送俾纽英兰华人历史协会下边嘅物品。相信历史会保存，比我自己保存更有意义。第一，几十年来我发表嘅《星岛日报》，数百篇文章，剪报成两大册，照片一大箱，以及其他与新闻有关嘅物品。而呢啲咁嘅新闻同文章，就系同整个华人社会切切相关。第二，我为中国武术研究所编辑七版，有十几本嘅武术童书，仲有 DVD。第三，我为阿美联谊会编刊，编辑每一个文字、每一个照片、排版编辑都系我嘅做嘅。呢、這个阿美宝。以及阿美节嘅答案，我就话送俾华人嘅先烈会。中国有一句名言：人生系短暂嘅，只系百代之过客。我本人同纽约人华人历史协会同享历史当中，但愿华人历史协会可以长存，记录。历史见证道路，我想讲个讲完。Thank you to the New England Chinese Historical Society for giving me the Sojourner Award this year. I am very grateful for the freedom, opportunities, and the available legal environment given to me by the American Society. For the care given to me by friends, for the support and help of those working in various organizations, and for the honor given to me by the Chinese Historical Society, my wife and I immigrated to Boston in 1975 with our 11-year-old son and one-year-old daughter. I founded the Chinese Wushu Research Institute the same year, where I was responsible for administration and publishing, and my wife Bose and Mark. Was responsible for teaching there. I was hired to start the Singtao Daily Chinese Newspaper Boston branch in 1980. Founded the Performing Artists Salon in 1992. Co-founded the Chinese Calligraphy Association in 1994. Led the establishment of Asian American Friendship Association and Asian American Art Troupe in 2010. Published the Asian American newspaper and co-founded 
the Greater Bay Area Philharmonic Alliance of Macau in 2019 and the Gu Institute of Earthquake Prediction in 2020. During my 46 years of Chinese journalism in America, I have written numerous editorial articles published in the Tsingtao Daily and have extensive involvement with the Chinese community in Boston. So please allow me to shed some light on current community concerns that I think are important. With the development of computers, networks, telecommunications and intelligence, many high-tech products have been replaced one after another. The Chinese society in Boston is also growing with each passing day. But history cannot be updated or replaced, can only leave behind tracks. For decades, the Chinese Historical Society has recorded stories of Chinese Americans and their participation in the creation and growth within American society. Historical testimony tells us that the Chinese Americans have made significant contributions. Chinese Americans are part of the building blocks of American society and should be recognized and respected on an equal basis as all ethnic groups. I have witnessed an increasing number of new Chinese immigrants. Their occupations moved from mainly the restaurant and catering industries to many other various industries now. The demographic structure that was once mainly characterized by Cantonese is slowly changing to include all Chinese from different parts of China. The trending Chinese language is now a hybrid of the Toisan dialect, Cantonese, and Mandarin. In the past, there were only a few low-income housing, such as the Taitung village, which was built with government support. The application process back then was efficient and applicants didn't have to wait long to move in. But these days, the application process is taking much longer to approve applicants, even with the involvement of several larger real estate owners who once also came from nothing 40 years back. They have helped build many low cost housing too with the aid of public funding, but there is still more that can be done. There are more opportunities and available resources now to build more houses for the future. But I am concerned that the waiting period for these applicants may actually take even longer. Unfortunately, the construction of new low cost housing can't keep up with the increasing number of new immigrants. But let's reflect on this for a moment. With the continuation of publicly funded low cost housing by the government, can we actually meet the demand? Is the Chinese society's emphasis on building low cost housing a good way to solve community problems? If one has a job and an income and the United States is so big, then can't we call other places home too? There are also many unrecognized people in diverse organizations that need just as much support and equal opportunities, not just in housing, but offices, activity venues, etc. These folks are important components who help drive a healthy society. But some of these families waiting for housing and other support may not stand a chance or even get enough help. There is a Chinese saying, a place where there is no place to stand. Here's an example. The Chinese Historical Society, after existing for decades, only has a small office and a small group of staff. There isn't even enough space to store the Chinese historical data and artifacts. Another example, a nonprofit music and opera group with a history of more than 80 years only has a small space for the 20 or 30 so members for gathering and practice. And also the Asian American Friendship Association with 11 years of service and growth and recognized by the provincial and municipal governments with the second Saturday of September each year recognized as the Asian American Festival. They have consistently been organizing activities with 20 to 30,000 attendees in large venue spaces, such as the Boston Common. However, they were only granted a tiny office space in the China Trade Building and later even rejected on this. How could this be? 
Why are they not receiving equal attention and only have small spaces to operate in when they are able to hold such significant functions for the community? And they frequently have to host Mahjong games and rely on the entry fees to maintain rent and expenses. I believe the government needs to reevaluate its housing policy. For decades, resources seem to go towards larger proprietors who, while neglecting the disadvantaged nonprofit organizations and its people. This doesn't seem to be balanced or fair, do you think? How can we build a more harmonious society under such circumstances then? The concerns I share are merely based on my observations and conscience as a journalist for so many years. My opinion may not necessarily be correct, but I do care. And I do welcome your thoughts and to have further discussion on these topics, because my goal here, which I'm sure many of you also share, is to help improve our communities and create better and equal opportunities for everybody. Finally, I will give the following items to the Chinese Historical Society. I believe that the Historical Society's preservation is more meaningful than my own. Hundreds of articles published in Tsingtao Daily for several decades in two volumes, a box of photos and other news related items. Also, more than 10 Wushu books and DVDs edited and published by the Chinese Wushu Research Institute and several special editions of the Asian American newspaper published by the Asian American Friendship Association for the Amer Asian American Festival. There is a famous Chinese saying, life is a passerby for a hundred generations. I am honored to be a part of history making together with the Chinese Historical Society. I wish the chairman of the society a long and healthy life and continue to be the witness and recorder of our histories. Thank you.